uh, continuing to tell you stories, and uh, Chris Latender, and we were discussing, it's not really the way you pronounce it, I mean, a good Frenchman, Latendre, or something like that. If this were a Bruins broadcast, you're, you're you'd right. be Latendre, you wouldn't be Latendre. <laughs> right, right. Uh, I saw you on the radio earlier today when you were uh, sharing your story. 40 years old, you're a police officer in Wilbraham, is that correct? Yes. Uh, take us through your story of, uh, of cancer, and the cure, and then the remission, and then coming back out. It's been an ordeal for you, hasn't it? Yeah, it's it? been a long ride for myself and, um, and my family for sure um back in january of 2011 i just i felt great had any issues i was actually trying to get back in shape and everything and uh i just i touched my neck and i felt a little lump there very small um and i went to the doctor and you know they said you know we should probably remove that and it came back positive for t-cell lymphoblastic lymphoma um they told me that it's a very rare aggressive deadly cancer um so I ended up getting uh, further tests done. They found out that I also had leukemia, um, and they um, staged me at stage four, so, um, which they said was early. Um, it usually gets you before you find it or you're able to treat it. So um, I pretty much went in right away and got treated uh, extensively um, with chemo um, till about June, and I was in remission at that point, and... Um, I stayed in remission until May of this past year, 2012, and I came back. I felt another lump in the same side of my neck, and my doctor from Springfield told me, he says, your only chance, basically, is you have to get a stem cell transplant, and Dana-Farber is the place to go, and he knew Dr. Anton and his transplant team and said they were the best around, so pretty much went there the next week, and... They started treatment right away with outpatient at Dana-Farber um, for a month, which didn't work. And then I got admitted for a month, and I needed to get in remission in order to get the transplant. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. So they got me in remission, and then I was bringing my, my two boys to their baseball game. Um, and I got a phone call from, you know, to see the Boston number. And I answered the phone, and it was uh, one of the... Um, Dr. Anthony's transplant team members and they told me that uh, my brother was a perfect match for the stem cells. Um, I had to pull over to the side of the road and I just started crying. I mean, these guys saw me and I told them what was going on and we knew that that was um, what was going to save my life. So it was just incredible. You know, and to watch them, their game after that was just priceless. Um, knowing that I was going to move forward for sure and, and just battle this thing head on. That was last August that you had the surgery, so you're a year out now. Yeah. How are you doing today? Excellent. I went back to work um, three weeks ago, and I've been scuba diving for the last couple months with my brother. Um, this has been just, I'm so lucky, you oh, know. One thing, younger brother, older brother? Younger. See? It's good to be good to your younger yeah, brother. Absolutely. <laughs> anything you regret right. now? Do you, you regret saying anything to him as a kid? <laughs> uh, yeah, we all always got along pretty good, so, yeah, it you was know, good. You just said, I'm lucky, and it's incredible. We have people on all day. These are people, You were diagnosed with cancer, you were in remission, you were back out, and yet you're sitting here saying I'm lucky. And that's really kind of why we're here today. We are so lucky to have this place right down the road. Yeah. How much did they mean to you? How much did Dana Farber mean to you? They were, they were like a, the second family. I mean, especially having being, you know, been in the hospital for over two months and then meeting up, you know, developing friendships with all the nurses and the doctors and literally just emailing it back and forth when I wasn't in the hospital and um, everything. They were just, it was like a second family. They were just phenomenal. I mean, just smart, smart people and very compassionate, and they always treated you like you were like the only patient there. And just that comfort level was just, it helped a lot. That's, yeah, that's, the, way I, that's the way I felt by being in the Red Sox organization. It's the only organization I've ever been in. And by meeting the owner of the ball club, Tom, Thomas Yonke, and then being part of the Jimmy Fund here. And I see what you're saying about the hospital. It's, it's family. And yeah. once you become part of the Red Sox, it's family yeah. from here down to Dana I know it's been a long day for you. When did you start here? We started were, uh, at six o'clock yeah, this you morning. Yeah, you were at the show first time this morning. It's it's like, well, that's it. That's you what know. it's all and about. And we won too. That's the Red Sox won, and uh, oh. you get to go uh, scuba diving with your brother again. Well, when we came over here, 
you know, the, my wife's like, oh my god, it's Jim Rice. She's like, I gotta get a picture of him. I felt the same way. I felt the same way about TC. I felt the same way about TC. We're gonna bring the whole family up and get a picture with Jim Rice. Ever since she was a little girl, she wants you. Wait a minute, no, no, no. Wait a minute. Did you hear that? She grew up watching Jim Rice. Chris, thank you so much for staying. Long duty here. Early morning on the radio, late night with us on TV. But it's all for this. Over three million dollars in counting. We go till midnight. We will be here till midnight. So pick up the phone and make a pledge.